RoboCop is a huge part of my childhood, one of my favorite films of all time, and I have to get that out there up front because I did enter this demo with that love of the franchise in my heart. And so far, I feel like the team at Taeyeon met fans halfway with this adaptation. RoboCop Rogue City is an original story that takes place in between RoboCop 2 and 3, aka the cool sequel and the one that shall not be discussed. And it's centered around this mysterious new figure simply called the new guy in town. Now, I finished the entire demo, including all side missions, for a total of about five hours. And I want to start off with the great. Simple and plain, you are Robocop. The team did an amazing job making you feel like you're in Murphy's metallic feet. The sound and subtle camera shake of every step you take makes you feel like an unstoppable tank. There isn't even a sprint button is more of a power walk. And after a few minutes, I found myself slowly moving my camera in order to match RoboCop's own motion. The visual effects of the targeting system combined with the infamous triple semi-auto burst of the Auto 9 combined to ensure that you never forget that you are RoboCop. It feels so good and honestly, a dream come true for fans like me. Now the game looks to be a mix of dedicated levels like this opening portion that takes place in a new station building and smaller open areas like this slice of Detroit. I think this was the right choice for this game as I'm tired of every developer instantly feeling this need to jump into an open world with this format fits the source material a lot better. Throughout these levels, you're either shooting your way through small waves of enemies or finding small pieces of evidence to confiscate such as stolen goods or nuke the addictive drug first introduced in RoboCop 2. Combat is interesting because you're either going to love it or criticize it to the crown. The hit detection is pretty spot on. It feels very grounded, impactful, and overall pretty fun because you feel like an unstoppable robot as you should. Now you can also throw objects and enemies and melee thugs into fruit punch if you like. There are ways to upgrade the Auto 9, but that feature was disabled in the demo, but RoboCop's skill tree was available. When you level up, you can invest a skill point into one of eight sections. These range from standard fare, such as combat and armor, which increases your attack power and defense respectively, and others such as deduction and psychology, which broadens RoboCop's dialogue abilities. They also contain milestones that unlock new features such as a slowdown ability and a stun. One of my favorites was Ricochet, which was ripped straight from the sequel. There are also these pretty cool slow motion breach portions in the game to mix it up a bit. Now the AI is really dumb. They will rarely see cover and each encounter really feels like a shooting gallery. The biggest challenge I faced throughout my entire time with the game was a few enemies with a metallic helmet on that prevented headshots until it was removed. Now I'm sure maybe at some point you'll encounter a version of RoboCop 2 or maybe an ED 209, but nothing that threatening was in the demo. The Auto 9 is also an amazingly powerful starting weapon and it quickly cuts through anyone in your path. You can pick up enemy weapons, but it feels almost blasphemous to do so, and overall they never felt as good as that Auto 9. But while some may see the combat as a vapid, non-existent challenge, each scenario I encountered played out just like in the films. I feel like it's more important for me to always feel like Robocop. This game is a virtual power fantasy, and I think the choices made by the devs, such as giving you his pretty powerful targeting system right out of the box was the right one. This is a game you don't play on extreme difficulty because then you have to play a lot more carefully and almost fearful as you turn every corner. That's not RoboCop. Where some see a shooting gallery, I see myself playing through a scene ripped straight from the movie screen. You're RoboCop and for this character to work in a game, you must feel unstoppable. There was also a brief moment of flashbacks that sort of showed Murphy's backstory before he became RoboCop. This is something that I felt like the films never really addressed as well as they could have. So it'll be interesting to see if they actually make this a big part of his story during the game. Now there are a good number of side missions as you walk around either the smaller locations such as the police station or you'll stumble around them while walking through the city. I enjoyed the variety. Some are really small and simple such as helping an officer with a stock locker or working the front desk. 
There are also dialogue options throughout conversations, and Taeyeon claims that your dialogue choices throughout the game will affect the ending. Now, I love this mechanic because it plays around with the flexibility of RoboCop's prime directives, two of which are to serve the public trust and to uphold the law. So, for example, this woman came in to report her son missing, but RoboCop reminds her protocols to wait 72 hours, not 48. By telling the woman to return the next day, you would be upholding the law, but by honoring her request for information, you are technically serving the public trust. It feels like a true choice, and it also feels like you're molding your own version of RoboCop without technically breaking his prime directives. It's a really smart system. There are also smaller crimes you can enforce, such as littering and even issuing parking tickets. Now, the game runs on Unreal Engine 5, and the city looks amazing. It's dark, ninja, smoggy. You can feel that filth. They did a great job, and the lighting and real-time reflections all come together to really ground you in Detroit, although I wish there was a bit more overall noise and activity. Now, it wasn't all great, though. The loading times were a bit long. There are moments of stuttering that the devs have already acknowledged, and there were a few short times my frames would crater to what felt like 20 frames per second, but this is a demo and these issues seem minor enough that they will hopefully be addressed before the game's upcoming launch. Character models are also wildly inconsistent. Robocop looks great and is modeled and voiced after the only Robocop we acknowledge, Peter Weller. He looks amazing in the classic metallic armor, although you can don the sequel's awful blue version if you pre-order the game and tend to have horrible taste. The NPC characters not as good looking and the lip syncing tech is woefully inaccurate even on murphy now the writing and voice acting aren't taking home any trophies but it felt kind of campy and fit the mood so i actually kind of liked it overall it reminded me of older xbox 360 games from that era and i mean that in a really good way there are also plenty of easter eggs and callbacks to the film such as this tj laser marquee the sux 6000 and the sunscreen from the sequel and that leads me into the end of this preview. As a fan of this franchise, it's clear as day that this game was also built by fans. The police station looks almost exact to what I remembered as in the first film, down to his calibration cave. You can tell a lot of love for RoboCop was put into this game. And if you're a fan just like me, this is definitely looking like a day one pickup. RoboCop Rogue City releases on PC via Steam and Epic Game Store. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, November 2nd. Like it if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and please share this video, it helps the channel, and tell me down below how you feel about this game. Thanks for watching.